One of the penalties of an ecological education is that one lives alone in a world of wounds. That was said by Aldo Leopold. Piping plover is one of the most endangered species in the entire Great Lakes ecosystem. Uh, and because of that, uh, we do a lot of different things to try to protect them and work towards their recovery. Here at Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore, we have almost half of the entire population breeding here at the park. They started to decline heavily in the late 19th century uh, with overhunting, market hunting, and then eventually habitat degradation and, and loss. They were listed as federally endangered under the Endangered Species Act in 1986, and at the time there was only 17 pairs. And they'd gone from the entirety of the Great Lakes Basin to just a handful of sites in northern Michigan. And that's the last place they were left in the world. Since then, we've been working on their recovery. Uh, we've gradually got the population going in the right direction. Uh, and we've been over 70 pairs now for about 10 years. Piping plovers, uh, especially Great Lakes piping plovers, are really specific in their habitat requirements. They only breed on wide, sandy beaches of the Great Lakes. They never are found inland, so they're only on, you know, Great Lake shoreline, that's it. Um, and only in places with nice, like, dune systems with wide beaches. So the same plover that breeds at a particular beach at Sleeping Bear Dunes might always winter at the same beach in the Gulf Coast of Florida. And that bird will fly between those two places year after year uh, without varying in their location. In that way, they're a really great harbinger of ecosystem health. So the presence of piping plover you know, pretty much indicates that you have good habitat and a relatively healthy ecosystem. Right now we're about to get on the boat to head out to North Manitou Island. We're going out to Dimmick's Point, which is a closed area that the park actually met, like closes down for plovers. And it's the biggest plover nesting colony in the entire Great Lakes. Good morning. Good morning, Ned. How are ya? Not too bad. All right. Sir? This is our uh, semi-permanent summer camp for the plover monitors. We have a pretty big crew dedicated each summer to protecting them. So from basically the arrival of the birds in April, to nesting, to fledge, takes about three months, maybe a little bit longer. And we're there the whole time trying to get them to be successful. You know, it seems like just a small part of the puzzle, saving this one species amongst something as big as climate change. But I like to think of it as like, we're buying time. You know, once piping plover is extinct from the Great Lakes, that's it, that's gone. But if we're able to keep it here for 30 or 40 years, you know, other people are gonna be working on solutions. So it's, you know, it's part of a, a team, you can't put it all on yourself. You know, you have to decide what you can do and do it. I've been working with plovers for about 12 years now. And you know, it's just a great feeling that, you know, I've been here to kind of see them go from 50 pairs to 60 to 75. And you can actually see these kind of outcomes for this incredibly rare species. I told my old boss once, you know, like, you know, some people kind of just go through their 40 hours, but you know, we could always say we help save a species. And that always meant a lot to me. <laughs> 